After almost two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm sure no one here wants to hear the words mass extinction event. Well, not to be the bearer of bad news, but we are indeed observing unprecedented biodiversity losses in wildlife. And sadly, some of the primary victims of this concerning trend are our amphibious friends. That's right, even in Canada, approximately half of our native amphibian species are characterized as threatened or worse. So what's killing the frogs? The full picture is undoubtedly multifaceted, but one factor that's likely driving population declines is pollution and specifically pollution from agriculture. For example, in the early 2000s, researchers in Quebec found an association between agricultural land use and adverse frog health. One even reported malformations in such high prevalence, it was actually difficult to find healthy frogs at sites adjacent to fields of crops. So how can we save our beloved frogs and toads from these toxic agrochemicals? You may be familiar with the mantra, the solution to pollution is dilution. While it's a satisfying rhyme, this concept has faced scrutiny. And the question really becomes, is this the best approach to protecting our ecosystems? And can we continue to allow releases of harmful substances into large bodies of water and just count on dilution to adequately protect sensitive species? What if instead the solution to pollution was retention? While this may look like a regular old swamp to you, this constructed wetland is actually working to prevent agricultural runoff from washing pesticides and fertilizers into the broader ecosystem. In this basin, agrochemicals are retained, degraded, or sedimented instead of being released. But wait, not so fast. Have we just inadvertently constructed a frog death trap? What might have been overlooked is that wildlife, such as amphibians, will opportunistically use these small ponds in a landscape that's otherwise fragmented most of their usual habitat. So this dilemma is central to my research. I wanted to know if the retention pond water is harmful to native amphibians. And to investigate this, myself and my two technicians collected water from the field site and exposed American toad tadpoles to it in the lab. The rate of metamorphosis was affected by exposure, and these tadpoles were significantly smaller than their control counterparts. Molecularly, we saw an alteration of gene expression involved in thyroid hormone signaling, suggesting that components of the pond water mixture are endocrine disrupting chemicals. So these developmental, morphological, and molecular alterations could lead to adverse outcomes for the tadpoles, but the biological significance of these findings must be considered before we can conclude if the solution to pollution is indeed retention.